Hey everyone, welcome back to another Godzilla Battleline video, and today I am going over the Ultima Leader deck that I am using to secure 500 wins to cop that Leader Icon. I think this is one of the better Ultima decks. It's pretty good so far. I've been making people give up on some big pushes, and it's just been doing wonders. So, obviously, there are pieces in this deck that I think you might be able to swap out for different ones, and we're going to go over that all when I break down every single thing in this deck. So, let's just go in order on the top row to the bottom row. Start with Godzilla Ultima as a leader. His ability, on paper, not looking too hot, right? So, three cost, it's going to do whatever damage, has a long range attack. It can hit other Ultimas, Manilas, and Super Xs, but I don't think you're going to want to use three energy to hit them unless you're killing one of them, right? What we're looking at is the passive that that ability gives you, and that is to reduce the cost of effect units by one for 15 seconds. Now, the time is pretty short, so your window to make a very effective push on this is not large. And uh, there is a typo in the game that says event units, so just to dispel any, you know, any any misconceptions or I'm just going to give you a clarification, you know. Not seasonal event units like this season's Ultima, Mecha, King Ghidorah, and Fire Rodan. Next season, who knows what, you know, last season was Jet Jaguar. Not the, not the seasonal units. This is effect units only. It says event, it's a typo, it's effect. E-F-F-E-C-T, effect. I think I spelled that right. I should have. So, he's lowering effect units, and you might say on the top row of this deck, you know, in the bottom row of this deck, you only have one effect unit, Psychic Chorus, to the Untrained Eye. Yes, I have two in this deck. Mogera, as it stands right now in the game, counts as an effect unit. Is this going to change back to him being a unit at any time? I don't know. I reached out to Toho for comment. I've gotten real, like, no response from them on that matter. I've only gotten them to respond about the Mogera duplication bug. Uh... But until we find out anything more about Mogera, at the time of this recording, he's an effect unit, and there will be a video at some point on this channel if he ever becomes a proper unit. But right now he's an effect, so he does benefit from this. He will go from 5 to 4 energy, and that is huge. Mogera is a really good unit, not an amazing unit like he used to be, but he's still very good, and for one cost, it just is way better. So you're going to want to be using that one less cost Mogera. Batra obviously a staple in decks for months and months and months gives a 30 percent damage boost to your characters that are caught in his field and uh huge especially with mecha king Ghidorah we're using in this deck right absolutely massive damage psychic chorus psychic chorus has gotten nerfed the season that this video goes live uh may 2022 so you could use fire dan in this deck if you wanted fire dan i think has better healing than Psychic Course at the moment. However, if you leveled up your Psychic Course to 30 or higher, it's still definitely worth running. You're still getting a lot of healing. But if your Psychic Course is still like 25 or 20, it's probably not worth running. If you wanted to throw Fire Rodan in here, you can. The reason I think Psychic Course in this deck in particular is better than Fire Rodan is because not only does it get the minus on its energy when you use Ultimate's ability, so it'll cost you two, which is insane. But you can place it anywhere on like Fire Dam where you have to kind of strategically place a map out where he's going to die to get that healing pool. I can just drop Psychic Chorus on my Mogera or on a really big leader push and just call it a day, right? Especially for one less energy. So that's why I think Psychic Chorus is better in this deck. But obviously feel free to swap him with Fire Rodan and, and see what that does for you. Next is Kamakurus. Kamakurus in this is definitely the flex pick. Uh, I just use Kamakurus to keep uh, characters off my pre-evolutions or to distract, you know, other units in a big push. Not a mandatory piece in this deck by any means. You could swap it maybe with a Hetera or something like that, but then you run, you know, three or four evolution units. Kamakris is the flex. I I use it to distract units. You can take it in. You can take it out. You can take it in. Whatever you want to do. Bailante, really good unit still. However, definitely not as good as she once was. Bailante was doing insane numbers and damage. She's still doing really good damage, but right now if she's not in water, Jet Jaguar's singular point actually has a higher DPS than her. I'm using her right now on the matches on screen because we're in London and obviously the water is on the leader. She's going to get a huge boost and do a ton of leader damage. You can use her on New York as well. There's a lot of water there for her to battle in the middle of the map and on the edges, so she's still very viable there. Tokyo, she is going to suffer a little bit because there's not a lot of water. She's still going to do great AoE, you know, great DPS. But if you wanted to swap Bailante out with something else, I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't reprimand you or anything like that. Uh, personal preference at the end of the day. Bailante is still pretty good. She's not as good as she was. King Ghidorah. Now, 
I usually run Godzilla Ultima as a, as a unit in my decks, right? And I've always said, you know, for as long as we've been around doing these videos, that Ultima and King Ghidorah are pretty interchangeable. You know, one is probably the best AoE you're getting, and one of them is probably the best, D, uh, you know, single target damage you're getting. So, I took Ultima and making my leader. I put Mecha King, I put King Ghidorah into this deck, and I was already planning on putting King Ghidorah in this deck when I heard Ultima was going to be a leader, because I didn't even know he was going to become Mecha King Ghidorah. So, the fact that he does become Mecha King Ghidorah now is huge, and, you know, he's already a really good unit on his own if he doesn't evolve, but now, if he does evolve, he's even better. You know, he has a shorter attack time, and he has a little bit more damage. The only L is because you have Batra, Bailante, and... Uh, King Ghidorah in this deck, you have three evolution units. Biolante and Batra are pretty much guaranteed evolution at the beginning of the match. You're going to pop them down in the field and get them immediately. You can cycle them pretty reliably. King Ghidorah, he has a 45 second evolution time. You cannot cycle him reliably. He's going to sit in your hand until he evolves or dies. This is kind of counterintuitive for cycling in a lot of spells or low costs onto the field to try to overwhelm your opponent. But while he is on the field, he's doing an insane amount of damage. So, very viable to put in this deck. King Ghidorah, I think if you wanted to swap him with anything else that's high DPS, high damage, you probably could. I like King Ghidorah, Mecha King Ghidorah in this deck personally. But if you wanted to try Kiryu or maybe Space God, I, I wouldn't recommend Space Gods, but like maybe Kiryu. If you want to try maybe in a few seasons from now, you know, from when this video releases, there's other really good DPS options that aren't King Ghidorah go for it, but at the time of recording, I think Mecha King Ghidorah is probably one of the better units to put in this deck, especially when it's Mecha King Ghidorah with that Batra boost and you throw Psychic, uh, Psychic Chorus on them, kind of a nutty combo, so very strong damage right there between those three. Next is Manila. Manila got a nerf, but it really doesn't change how he is. He's already dying in either one or two hits anyway. He still is. He just lost 100 health. Uh, it's not a very big deal. Manila is cheap. And his stun, just like all stuns in the game, will retarget a character. So if an Ultima, a if an Ultima unit is targeting my leader, and I use Manila on that Ultima, and I stun that Ultima, that Ultima will retarget to a different enemy. You know, whatever's closer, Manila, my Batra, whatever's closer. This is huge when you're pushing with the Mogeras and you're doing your big leader push because if your character, if your enemy's leader is fighting your main DPS and your Mogeras behind them and your Manila stuns them, and then that leader turns around to fight that Mogera, you are giving your units like three seconds to do just damage, unmitigated damage without the threat of that leader coming and attacking them. So Manila stun, very huge for this deck. If you want to use Sanda, you can too, but that's a slow, not a stun. You could, if you wanted to flex Manila out of this deck, you could. I'm not saying you have to keep him in there. I like him because I like to retarget the enemies. That's why I like it. So now that I've broken down all these characters, What's the strategy that I use? Well, if you've been paying attention to, you know, what's happening on screen and not just my beautiful face over here, you can see that I'm building up a big push, you know, with the high damage characters, King Ghidorah, Batra, Biolante, and when I get up close to the enemy's leader, I'm popping the Ultima's ability, I'm dropping uh, Mogera on the enemy leader, and then I'm dropping Psychic Chorus if I can as well. Having these two spells or any other spells you put in your deck, Dimension Tide, whatever, at a lower cost is going to make your pushes way more deadly. And I think Mogera is probably the best effect to be using with Ultima because he's doing constant damage pretty much. His attack time is like 1.4 seconds or something ridiculous like that. I'm not 100% on those numbers, but it, it is like in the one point whatever range. And uh, it's it, it, while he's not doing a lot of damage, he's a distraction, right? And that's something that you want. If your enemy's placing another unit on the field, they might target him first before they target your units. And that's something that Missile Strike's not going to do. Train Bomb's not going to do. Psychic Course isn't going to do. And then Psychic Course, for one less, you know, while it's not as good as it was, for two energy, Psychic Course is going to be healing a lot. So something to keep in mind. You, you're really going to want to use his ultimate only when you're making a really big push. If you use his ultimate anytime before... I don't think it's worth it because it already costs three. So to drop Mogera at four, you're going to need at least four and then another three for the Ultima. So that's seven. And then you need two more. So nine for Psychic Core. So you're going to need to do your big push like on you see on the middle screen right here. Very big push. And then you would need more energy than that. You need nine, right? So it takes a lot to get that final push going. 
But even if you don't want to do one big push like that, if you use that ability to just get a quick Psychic Chorus out for less, that's good too. An Akshimo Gara, that's good too. You can see on the right, on the right, like far most right screen, I make the opponent give up because I was able to pop both, right? And get the Mogara on the field. So that's how I use it. Even if you don't want to use the ability, this is still a solid deck to be using regardless. You can always change it up. You can always throw ultimate in a deck that you don't plan on using his ability and just focus on his defensive capabilities with having an amazing long range attack. But to me, I like to capitalize on the ability and it really throws people off because everyone right now, it's so early in the season, everyone is stuck in this mentality that ultimate is ability is bad and you shouldn't be using it. So as soon as you pop it off and then you start throwing out units and doing chunks and chunks of damage, your opponent is getting caught off guard super fast i promise you it is crazy the amount of surprise attacks i'm getting on people with that being said if you made it to the end of this video thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you all on the next one bye bye